Yes, it's John G. Sutton. Tales from the Jails. Got that little twitch back there. Yeah. Uh, people, somebody's asked me here to talk a little bit more about a guy called Peter Cook. Now, Peter Cook was uh, otherwise known as the Cambridge Rapist. And he was located, when I knew him, on C2 Landing. And uh, I've previously explained how he uh, dressed himself up in a homemade dress that he'd fashioned out of a bed sheet that he'd painted with ink paints that he got from the art class. So somebody had stolen them or given to him. And uh, he painted himself a, a, a dress, removed everything else and put this sheet on like a dress with a hole cut in the top. And jumped out of his cell with an enormous erection and decided to kiss me. Kiss me, Mr. Sutton, I love you, you know. Yeah, and that was about Peter Cook. He was active. I, I had just introduced him to the door frame, you know. Whoops! Poof! Made a mistake there, mate. Back in your cell. He was a strong little bastard, you know. It didn't break his head. Usually the fall on the floor when you've given them a treatment like that, you know, but no, he just walked in his cell a little bit and shut the door, I didn't let him out for a little bit after that. Uh, and uh, so that was Peter Cook, but he was actively homosexual when he was in uh, the, the scrubs, and he, he, he wanted, he applied, believe this or not, for a sex change, yeah? He, wa he wanted to be turned into... Uh, a female he wanted his wedding tattle removed and uh, a false fanny fabricated uh, and that's what I believe he wanted you know that's what he said he wanted anyway I don't think he got it I think he was eventually when he was fully convicted and marched off to uh, somewhere like Broadmoor or somewhere like that anyway he died in prison he's he, he's long gone but uh, there were a number of uh, inmates on C2 Landing that were actively operating as, like, uh, male prostitutes, I believe. You know, they were charging, uh, I believe the going rate was a quarter of an ounce. That was it. You know, they would provide uh, the other inmates with, with their services, something like that. So I was told, seriously. Yeah, I previously mentioned one of the new re inmates who came on uh, on reception to the to C2 landing asked me how much it was for uh, uh, a blowjob, you know, and I, said, I asked the landing players, they told me it was a quarter of an ounce. Yeah, he didn't want to have somebody sucking his todger, though. He wanted to go around sucking there. So I imagine that uh, he eventually found his calling. You know, he would he would be receiving the quarter ounce payment for such services, which were not infrequent in prison. I mean, some of these alpha males, you know, they've got to find a release, so to speak, you know. And uh, that's that's what they were doing. I mean, of course, we've got people that were raping other inmates. You know, they, they, uh, generally speaking, they tended not to complain too much. But uh, if they were injured, I mean, I see people injured when I was a hospital officer who, who'd uh, been molested by their cellmates and... Uh, with, with torn rectums so it, it was I believe it was a pretty painful experience and, and not only that it's, it would be embarrassing wouldn't it you know to admit that you'd been raped by your cellmate raped by another raped by a man I must say it's not happened to me somebody when I was 15 uh, tried to uh, molest me when I was coming home from, uh, I used to work part-time at a cinema doing odd jobs and cleaning the boilers and running errands and stuff like that. And uh, I was 15, I was walking home one night, be about half past ten, and this guy said, oh, come with me. And uh, so I just, uh, not really keen on that, you know. So I, 
and oof, you know but these days you'd get arrested for that wouldn't you they call it you know, they call it queer bashing oh, well, I don't have anything against people who are of that persuasion it just don't involve me I'm not really wanted to get go down that path if you know what I mean was it Robert Frost said two roads diverged in a yellow wood I took the path less travelled by and that made all the difference well it made all the difference to me I stuck on the straight path I think I did anyway I certainly my wife seems to think so as well 52 years we've been married yeah so that was basically it with Peter Cook. You know, if you ask me about details, he was just a, a crazy man. He'd raped about, I don't know, 18, 20 uh, students, female students, not men. And he used to carry this uh, mask that he put over his head with a zip. You've probably seen the, remember the images. Cook, look him up, Peter Cook, the Cambridge rapist on uh, on Google. And, and then go to images, yeah, and you'll see the image of this guy with a zipped, zipped up black leather hood. And that's what he'd it, be terrifying, wouldn't it? Especially this guy. And he was only about five foot four, but uh, big shoulders and strong. So if he got hold of, he got hold of one of these young girls, you know, he definitely, instantly overpower them, and. Uh, forcibly insert himself within so that's that's what's barely happened and the problem was with people in, in the prisons not complaining they just went on from victim to victim and there was one particular guy on on, on sea wing who was a active homosexual who was getting inmates down and uh, that was the governor the governor of Sea Wing, when I was there, was taking down Category A inmates at lunchtime and getting them to uh, to service him. It wasn't the other way around. He was obviously he liked to be on the receiving end. Oh, so I was told. You know, I reported it, by the way, because in return for doing this, the governor was smuggling out letters and bringing in items of interest to the prisoners like whiskey and stuff like that oh seriously i reported it and what do you think happened when i reported it yes folks they called the police in to investigate me yeah seriously they were looking to stitch me up i mean when you think about it how diabolical is that i mean i had a wife and family and they're bringing the police in to investigate me for doing my job absolutely disgraceful anyway i've got to warn you now here so if you have any questions about uh, specific uh item I mean, you just ask me here i'll do my best to answer as best i can you know <coughs> yes it's the song dinger and i've had a request from one of our regular commentators on here who frequently insults my singing by the way but you've asked for this he wants me to sing uh, the Mario Lanza song from the Student Prince, the drinking song. Yeah, it's SARS actually. So here you go, SARS, you've asked for this. And I'm only going to sing a bit of it though, because I know I'm going to crucify this bastard. But when I've done it, I'm going to read you a nice poem, one of my favourite poems. I'm going to read you William Blake's The Tiger. But first of all, I'm going to attack. Yeah. yeah, a bare knuckle assault on Mario Lanza's The Drinking Song. So get your dukes up, folks. Here we go. Drink, drink, drink to eyes that are bright as stars when they're shining on me. Drink, drink, drink to lips that are red. And sweet as the fruit on the tree Is a hope that those bright eyes will shine Lovingly, longingly, soon into mine May those lips that are red and sweet 
tonight with joy my own lips meet. Drink, drink, let the toast start. May young hearts never part. Drink, 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 let every true lover salute his sweetheart. Drink, drink. Well, there you go. I gave it a little go, didn't I? And now, as a special treat to me, I'm going to read The Tiger by William Blake. One of my uh, relations died. In fact, it was the aunt of my son-in-law, and she was a big uh, fan of uh, wild animals and, and nature. And I read this at her funeral. And this is The Tiger by William Blake. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire, and what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet, what the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors clasp? When the stars threw down their spears, and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright, in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? There you are, The Tiger by William Blake. Thank you very much. This is John G. Sutton, Tales from the Jails Do Like, and subscribe and all the rest of it. See you soon.